well, I absolutely love this movie. I, Aww. I, um, I, I actually, I looked at your IMDb and I saw like all these horror movies under it. And I'm like, those are like all my favorites. <laughs> so well, you were involved with so many of them. <laughs> well, you know, I was, as fate has it, lucky enough to meet James Wan on, on uh, the first one that we worked together, which was uh, Dead Silence and at for Universal. And then, you know, we, he and I just became kind of a team for like the next four movies in a row. And I was, you know, kind of, I, I had, I had been involved in horror before this. Okay. You know, Tales from the Crypt, Child's Play, whatever is a cinematographer. And, you know, I enjoyed, I enjoyed um, uh, making horror movies. I'm not even a horror movie buff or wasn't at all. I just, it's just, you, you use so many tools in the, filmmaker's toolbox or tool bag to 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 enlist the audience and the characters and then mess with them basically and I love that okay so it's just kind of random how it all happened I mean I ended up working with James on, and then when I, when we did the conjuring it was actually at a test screening of the conjuring there was a producer Peter Saffron on it who was sitting in front of me we were really became really good friends we still are buds and he turns back to me and goes, you know, you should direct Annabelle. And I went, hmm, yeah, maybe. And then we, that happened. And then ever since that, because that was so successful, and not just because of me, it was everybody, you know, but whatever that um, I got labeled into, you know, directing more horror movies, basically. But, and then, and it's it's been fun. I mean, I do want to do other things and I'm involved, you know, actually in another movie that's it's it's got a, actually a potential horror aspect to it but it's more of a thriller it's also like more psychological but anyway it's a fun genre yeah well given all your experience in the horror genre what is it about lullaby that really made you want to get involved with it you know i love the lilith character i mean if you think about it she was the first uh woman's rights person I, and i'm a fan of women and their rights to be honest um i was raised with three sisters and my mom i have a brother and all but in an italian family it was very you know italian but i appreciate uh the power of women and in in the world and in history and so that was really interesting to me and she got bone you know in the mythology she got screwed and and so the you know the most powerful thing on earth is his love and the love of a mother for their for her baby you're you know i mean come on there's nothing more binding and powerful so that was really interesting to me i also was um it hit me the moment i read the script I finished the last page and I said you know it'd be really cool is to make us an opening title sequence where you show all these lullabies and they're all dark you start thinking about it they're all dark and and to set the tone for the movie i thought that would just be a creatively fun kind of cool thing and if the you know, opening when you meet vivian you can see we intermingle those images you know and that that with her i thought that was fun um you know i guess that's part of it um i just really really like the lilith character and uh and I think that was the biggest part. Yeah, I um I had read that you said it was important for you to make lullaby relatable so the scares would feel more real. Um, and that motherhood motherhood part kind of ties into that, right? Uh, was Rachel's fear of being a bad mom kind of right. part right. of all that? Right. Well, yeah, you know, if what what the most powerful sort of uh tool a demon has or a spirit has is to get inside your mind and once that happens and and that's the con you know having a baby as a mother is that's it that's the most powerful thing especially since she's you know a, she was a real professional very successful you know restaurateur and and then you know like in real life with every mother and father and having babies 
and the separation of work and who taking care of the babies and all that and how you know it's 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 a it's a very um, <laughs> relatable thing to really everybody once they go through it you know so it, it's it, that conflict so good to you know play with and and I think you know Una did a good job with it. Oh yeah, it was it was excellent. I thought it was, I thought it was great performance for sure. Yeah, I agree. She and Ramon together, I think, are amazing. Yeah, well, like speaking of that, I know that the the central relationship, um, it was a really big part of the story. You wanted it to be clear that they do love each other. What kind of work did you do with the actors to build that dynamic? You know, it's it's a great question. Um, I, I do I, I do a couple of things, okay, and I do this with. Every movie I've directed, even in television, I take the time to do it when I've directed some television, is I take every character out of the script and go through every scene. And then I write down in every single scene what emotions and what feelings and what conflict they have, what they're going through in every scene. And I can almost create like a graph of their, of the flow of what they go through. And I take that out and then I talk to the actors before I send it to them, I write it and I send it to them and I say, what do you think about this? So that we we kind of uh, get on the same page literally before we start shooting. So that's independently with each one. But then, you know, unfortunately, the reality of which most people don't know, I mean, I only had them together in person The last one, the week before we started shooting. So it literally, the you know, uh, the Friday before the Monday we started shooting or the Saturday, the set was built. That's their house. I, I had no, I didn't want anybody else there. I went down, I showed it to him. I walked him around and we sat there for hours, almost a whole day and left them. We bullshitted. I got them used to their house. I left them alone. I let them talk and really, because they're both professionals you know they're really good actors so there's that facet too but you know and also I did introduce them you know before of course and had them um I think they they uh maybe FaceTime together you know a bit before and they're both very um uh accommodating professionals and they 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 became buds pretty quick you know and 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 so that's kind of that's what I did and what we did and you know it seemed to work. Oh yeah, in my opinion, it absolutely worked. I thought I really felt the connection between between those characters for sure. Oh great, it's important. Well, I also I wanted to ask you. I I I kind of noticed this theme of of I want to say endlessness mm -hmm. um, throughout the movie. It when Rachel was looking under the sheets and then when, you know, she was in the mirror um, and, you know, she found the babies. Was there a connection between any of that? Because I, I was personally very curious. You know, I think that's a, it's a really interesting insight. So great question. Um, we, on this side of the veil in reality, wonder what's on the other side that's what is the in my opinion the essence of way, what makes horror uh interesting effective uh commercial everything you can say about it why people people there's all different kinds of religions and it all deals with what's on the other side all of them basically in many ways are the same if you really think about it, you take world religion class, which I did in high school and it opened my mind to so many things, but neither here nor there. What's on that other side is actually infinite, if you think about it. Yet, it's also as, as vast as it is, like even Lilith's, Lilith's nursery, you know, in the film where you come and finally see where she has all the babies, it's, it's intended to be endless. And, and and the the under the bed, you know, we just we just we just built like a thirty by forty foot bed, fake bed, and I had her go around there. And I put a GoPro on a boom pole to like that's how we did the scene. It was so simple, but it was so effective. Did it 
seemed endless, you know? And, you know, it, so much of uh, what's uh, in our minds, what we conjure in our minds is right here on, on one hand, and yet on the other hand, it's endless of what the, 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 the chasm of thoughts and where they come from and where they go and, and all that. So I think, I mean, you're really onto something. I can't say that that was a theme that I necessarily intended, but the fact that you get that is phenomenal. I love that answer. That was, that's so cool that there really is that endlessness because uh, I didn't think about it in that way from the other side that that is endless and infinite. We don't know. <laughs> don't. And it's the unknown and the endlessness of it that makes it so vast and actually scary because it's, you don't, you don't, you can't grab it. You, you, you don't know. You just don't know. And matter of fact, this, this film that I'm attached to, uh, which hopefully happens, uh, which is called the angler is, is it's all about guilt and what it conjures in your mind. And the, what happens and and what you project and you see is it real or isn't is it supernatural or is it all in your head that to me is super exciting awesome well i am gonna have to wrap but thank you so much for chatting with me about the film like i said i really enjoyed it so it was super fun to hear your your insight on it well i'm glad you enjoyed it i hope everybody else does too